Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're gonna to be talking about utilizing HTML uh, tables with JavaScript. Let's get started. So today we're going to be looking and learning about dynamically handling a data table uh, using JavaScript. So the first thing that we want to understand and to actually do this, let's actually just go on and create up a uh, HTML file here and I will put it on desktop. Let's create up a new folder here. Now let's call this um, HTML JS tables. I already have another one there from another video, but and let's create this and just call this index.html. So as this is an HTML file, let's go on and put it in with just some boilerplate here, and it's just HTML tables with JavaScript. So what some basic concepts that we need to understand is understanding the DOM, okay, the document object model. Now JavaScript interacts with HTML elements via the DOM and a hierarchical representation of the page. Now we want to be able to select elements so we can use the uh, document. So for example, if I do script here and I do something like uh, document dot get element by ID. Okay, we can use a method like this. We could utilize our query selector. Okay, and we could also do use the query selector all uh, to select HTML elements such as tables. So the first thing that we actually need here, well, is a table. So let's go on and create up a table. Let's create up a maybe how would we want to create up a nice table here? Let's just do something very basic. So let's call this, we want our first row here, um, and then we'll do TD to be something like cell one, and then we'll do another TD here to be cell two. And I know it's gonna drive people crazy. So let me go on and make this. Having all kinds of trouble today, aren't I? Another one here, just just for sake of it. And let's also go on and create up. Let's give this let's give this an ID here. So ID is going to be just my table. All right, we don't have any headers or anything in here, so that's fine. Uh, so let's. The first thing we want to do inside of our script here is to be able to grab the table. So we can say something like, uh, let table is equal to our document dot get element by ID. And this is my table. Okay, as we can see here, my table. All right, so we have grabbed a hold of the document. So we're going to select our HTML document uh, utilizing JavaScript. And then the next thing we want to do is to be able to read the table data. Okay, so here we want to be able to maybe grab cell one and cell two. All right, well, we can do that by let rows is equal to table dot rows. And then let first row cells equal to uh, rows. And here we only have, technically we have only one row of cells here. So uh, that's okay. So we'll grab we'll grab the first row of cells. So maybe maybe we do want to let's make this maybe a little bit more interesting. So we'll do uh, let's do a table header here and do um, header one, header two. Let's create up a new row here, and we'll do. Um, TD here, cell one, cell two. So we'll have a look, maybe, maybe we'll want it to be a little bit more complex. Okay, so now let's go on. And so we we've, we've, should have grabbed up the first row of cells here, okay? If we wanted the second row of cells, we'd put a one here. 
So let's go on and iterate over each of the cells and loop through it to access their data. Okay, so we can do four here and for index zero, we want to grab the rows dot length. Okay, and then we're going to loop over each of those. So in this instance though, we want this instead to be let cells equal rows i dot cells. Okay, and we need to also do another loop here. Okay, so for, all right, and in this instance, let's just call this, uh, I thought that one is index, so we'll leave this one as j, whoops. And what we want to change is our array here, and we want to loop over each of the cells for their length. And again here, we're going to console log out the cells of j dot inner text, and we're going to get rid of this. So now we should be able to grab each of the rows inside the cell. So let's let's actually go on and open this up and we'll take a look. So open with Google Chrome. All right, so we have here our table with header one, header two, cell one, cell two. And if we do the inspection and look at our console, we have four undefined here, so we have some sort of issue here. So let's go on and actually look at what happened. Well, I misspelled inner in there. I can see that. I put ender. All right. So now we should be able to refresh. And we look at our console. And notice here we get header one, header two, cell one, cell two. So we're able to loop over and grab all of the information. So that's one way for us to interact. So what does this do here? All right, so here we are iterating over cells. So we're looping through cells to access their data. All right, and what we're hap what is happening up here, okay? For these two cells, we are accessing rows and cells, all right? And specifically, we want to select rows and cells within a table, all right? And again, here, what's happening up here is we are access table by its ID. All right, so these are nice. We can, we can see that we can interact with the table by grabbing its data. Now, what if we want to push data to that? We want to update the data, okay? Well, we can do that. So, so now we're going to modify table data. So let's say that we want to change the content of one cell, okay? Change cell content, uh, of specific cell. So table dot rows one cells one dot inner text and let's say uh updated here. Okay. So this is changing the cell content, okay? Now the original cell content is this header one, header two, row one, row two, or cell uh, cell one, cell two, okay? As we can see here, now if I refresh this, notice we get updated here. Again, this is one, one, okay? When you think about, if you think about your matrix algebra that you've potentially had. So this row is, this column and row is zero, Okay, so you want to go, if we go back over here and we look, we want row one. 
Okay, well, we start out at zero, then we go to row one, and then we want cell one. So this cell is zero, and this cell would have been one. So we updated it here and we put in that information. So you can go through and you can change any cell. Now, what if we want to add a row? Okay, so we want to append a new row to the table. So maybe you want to interactively update a table. Well, we can do that by using the insert row. Now, to guarantee that we want this to be at the end, we can just say let new row equal table dot insert row at minus one. Now, minus one indicates it's at the end. Okay. Adds row at the end. Now we can also add in a new cell. So let new cell, oh, new cell is equal to, uh, not table. We want to add it to the new row. So new row dot insert cell at zero. So we want it at the beginning of the new, uh, at the first, the first cell in the new row. So now we need to actually call this and put input into there. So we want uh, we want to actually add in HTML or insert text into there. So we can do new cell dot inner HTML is equal to new uh, new cell who dis. Okay. So now let's take a look. All right. So now we should see. And this information coming up right here under header one underneath cell one. Now notice we have new cell who dis. All right, great. We have information there. Now notice we didn't put any new information over here. All right. So but it keeps it keeps that information empty. Now, what if what if now so we've we've modified data, we've added rows to data. What if we want to remove data? Okay, so let's say that we want to remove, we want to remove this header row here. Well, we can do that by doing, oh, and let's do this. Let's say deleting row. Okay, so you can say table dot delete row of zero. All right, so you want to remove the header in this instance. Okay, well, let's refresh it. And notice now it deletes that header cell. Okay, so it removed that whole row. We, we lost our header row. Well, so now let's go on and say, what if we wanted to add in something like an event listener? So we want to respond to user interactions. So respond to user interaction, and we would use event listeners. Okay, so we want to attach an event listener to handle user actions. All right, so first we do table.add event listener, and we're going to listen for a click. And then let's go on and create up a function here. And we want it to listen for an event. And in here we would say event dot target dot style dot background ground. Color is equal to, uh, let's say, let's make it blue. All right, so now if we update this, we should be able to now see if they if we click inside that cell, it updated them to be blue. Again, so if we refresh, 
they all turn blue. Okay, so you're able to add in an event listener to highlight data with a click. So another thing that you could do is you could create up much more complex um, examples, okay? So like a, a very practical example would be maybe to create up a sorting function. Okay, and implement that function to sort the table. So you would have something like function uh, sort table uh, column index here. And then you would say add sorting logic based on column index. Okay, now you could always trigger that with maybe a button or something else. And, and I may go over this particular example, maybe in another video, if we have time. But again, what you can do is just this, this is just showing you, you can have all kinds of functionality built into your HTML files. Now, you've basically learned the fundamentals today of table manipulation using JavaScript. We've also talked about some advanced topics about filtering data and maybe interacting with things. You could also interact eventually with APIs, right? To pull in data and populate your table. So hope you guys like this video. And if you want more of them, comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.